Hello, hello, everybody. My Hi. name is Chantel Francis. This is my co-host. Michael Pez. And we're here to discuss, recap, and review Survivor, season 36, episode six. six. Ghost Island. Ghost Island. Which wasn't even in this episode. I'm, I'm over it. Like, like what a like, I, I like I'm this. still actually really upset about Stephanie having to leave last week. And, like, the fact that they didn't, like, this show's called Ghost Island, and she has, like, I'm sure she was a producer favorite. And she was just begging to play a game on Ghost Island. Like, couldn't they just have done a little finagling then? Like, why have this theme Ghost Island and it's only been in play twice, potentially? No game for you. Like, like F off no game for me. There should be a game in every single one. Yeah, there should be. There, like, all those twists that were happening, like, and all those little mess ups and all those little ghosts that were created based off of this series. As a fan, you know, every episode you should see something. Everyone should have like- At least they can play. If it's like a, if it's like a no game for you, yes or no, whatever. Like it's still chancy. And so they might not get a game even if they play the game. So like make everybody play the frigging game if they're on Ghost Island. And I think that they should still have been immune from the tribal because then it makes Sending someone there, a, a strategic purpose. Yeah, and then send them there, and then don't give them any food. Like they get like rice, they get to like sit there and. Well, I think it, I don't mind like Ghost Island being luxury island. Like that's totally fine for me too. But I think that they should be immune fr immune from the vote, because then it would make it like no, all just make them go to rocks. Who cares? Like, no, like, people are going to have a little more of an invested, invested, um, invested in, like, what happened, the outcome of, like, the, that rock draw or who gets set. So, I don't know. I think that the producers dropped the white ball there. Big the time. White, the white ball. <clears throat> so, we start off at uh, day 15, and the tribe comes in. And it's kind of pretty much well known that navidi has been on a winning streak. Um, and Lolo has not been doing so well. It's been knocking all, out all my uh, fantasy draft players. Um, but they definitely have not been on a winning streak. So when they, all the tribes come in and famous lines of Jeff are... Drop your butts. And they're all like, oh man, oh <laughs> man. And like... And not only do they just drop their bugs, they're like, okay, so how do you feel about this? Jonathan's like, I don't know, I guess we gotta do it. And, like, and I did it in the second half of what he said, even though I usually understand him, but the second half I was like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah. um, but at least though, Mike recognizes, and I was help hopeful, and you probably are were too, that there was like a bright light at the end of the tunnel for uh, his game at least. Cause like for he- Michael's, For yeah. Michael's for sure, because if they are going to um, split them all up, whether it be three tribes or two tribes, he's still a very strong player. So they're going to want to win that first immunity challenge. And he's not going to want to, like, they're not going to kick him off first. So. Exactly. Well, most likely. But <laughs> yeah. you never but know like, yeah. people. But um, at least, like, shaking it up, it just gives an opportunity to have, like, new life, new, a target that's bigger than him. He may come on the other side of the numbers. But um, I thought it was pretty awesome that Des had the line that became the title of the episode because she's hoping that fate is homing <laughs> and that fate's got her back. So I thought that was kind of funny. Because that's well, the title she, of the she clearly, she clearly was the focus of this episode. So as we'll, as we'll touch on later. So surprise, surprise. Well, we kind of, we figured it was most likely going to be three tribes. I um, didn't think that. I didn't think that. You oh, you thought like, it was going to go you, down? Yeah, that's what I thought was going to happen. Like, I thought that's probably what they're going to do. I didn't think three tribes at all. But yeah, no, like, I like, the fact, I, like, I like the fact that there was three tribes. That was great. And what's the name of the, the third tribe? Um, Yanuya. Glad which, to know which, which means buffalo in Fiji. I don't know. I don't know what it means. Oh, I was like, I was like, oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I did my research. But I'm no, just like, Yanuya. I'm just like, yeah, 
Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Green. Yeah, awesome. I knew you. <laughs> Come on, green. Come on, green. Come on, no shelter. Come on, build a shelter. But at least, though, I was really, like, thank goodness for them is that they have Chris, who's strong, and they have um, Wendell, who's the furniture designer, and he's the one that pretty much helped make that really awesome uh, Navidi Beach, Navidi Beach. So at least they have, like, good people in their hands to make their tribe or their new, uh, their new camp. And Sebastian. Oh, yeah, and Sebastian. Well, it just has, like, a workhorse. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, Chris and Wendell already had built that other. Was, was, was Sebastian with them as well? Yeah, it's Sebastian, Wendell, Chris, Jen, right. and Sebastian. Laurel. That's a good Chris. tribe. We're friends, right. And, right, okay, got it. Um, so, oh, did you, did you like how uh, Wendell still had the stinky conch shell for Seb? <laughs> One, I didn't know what that was. It was a shell. Two. It's a sh I don't understand the shell, but like when I see a shell, it's usually like you didn't have something living in it before. Well, they all like, apparently like it was no, but apparently this was like smelled really bad. <laughs> I don't know what that would smell like, but rotting flesh. But they all smell like rotting flesh, probably. I know. I wonder how nasty everybody actually smells. Honestly, that'd be like, like one thing. Like some people like after four hours or like I need deodorant but then again like if you're out there though and you're just sweat like like if you're in the water and whatever like with because the smells are coming from bacteria right so wouldn't you think that they would just be like smell like sweat as opposed to like bo unless they're really hairy and then maybe they're getting some them some I don't know but like for some like I'm a, a fortunate person that, you know, like I really don't have to put on deodorant every day. And it's like, it's no problem. And I know, like, I, I smell myself. I'm like, I'm good. On this show, it's like they're constantly rubbing their faces down with sand. I was noticing that. They're always getting some like tree bark thing and like shoving it up their teeth to like clean their teeth. So I'm like, they don't have any luxury, but. I can just imagine how filthy and dirty they are. Like, you know, like... Like, how did, like, Rob, Boston Rob and Amber, like, really get together, like, enough to be engaged by the finale? <laughs> like... <laughs> they must be the two best-smelling people in the whole wide world. Or, or, do you know what? Okay, this is actually another thing, and this is completely an aside, but sometimes, like, I think about in, like, um, how relationships are and are not developing as quickly as they used to in the past. And I think part of it is because we're so um, quick to remove and perfume and clean our natural scents, which is a natural pheromone or natural, like, you know, erotic stimulant for the opposite sex or the same sex, whoever you're attracted to. And so I'm curious is to they really actually just love each other's natural nasty scent um, because they can actually smell it. So that's how they can like, it actually allured them to each other. Interesting. <laughs> because there's some people's smells and I'm like, oh my God, you're disgusting. But some people are like, oh my God, your BO smells like really good. <laughs> I said it here. I guess. The, the thing I would compare it to is like morning breath, okay? Like, morning breath, because, like, my, it's a really funny story. My dad would always point this out, how, like, in movies, these people would be, like, this couple, and they would wake <laughs> up, and then they would, like, start doing it in the movie or something like that. My dad would be like, that's fake. Morning breath. Morning breath. <laughs> like, but at the same time, I've been with people, partners, boyfriends before, that, like, honestly, we woke, woke, woke up, and we're like, no, we're going to, like, make out and stuff and we were totally fine with it so i was totally down for that person's morning breath it wasn't as bad as yeah you're right and well don't you find like something is like a little bit of bo is like not that bad <laughs> if you like oh, the guy yeah well especially like since like i don't want to smell that person all the time that that smell like that look i wear lacoste i smell great all the time however you know sometimes i don't need to smell like lacoste all the time 
Exactly. Sometimes your natural smell might allure some more people. They might be like, ooh, who's that? And they're oh, the gay community. Oh, so good. Bottle it up for me. <laughs> yes. I know what you're talking. I've had oh I've had some aggressive men come on to me. They're just like, oh, that smell. And I was like, oh, you okay, you're weird, dude. <laughs> Sorry. They're not that weird. <laughs> and off of that topic, well, I mean, like, any survivor, these people probably reek. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> but back to the actual game. Hi, so, Survivor. <laughs> Wendell um, was actually really happy to not have to be managing Chris's ego and Dominic's ego. Um, he was saying that he will really miss Dom, but he was happy to be able to create like a new bond with Chris over there, which I think is really good for Wendell because like if he's going to be roped in with Dom, like I know he's still good friends, he's going to support him, and he's going to work with him when they get back together, but. Um, the fact that he won't be targeted necessarily as like, I'm gonna get to Wendell or to Dominic through Wendell. You know what I mean? I'm gonna take out his, his right hand man. So the fact that he's making ins with Chris, I think is really good to make him not be the first obvious choice if they can't get to Dom. Yeah. <laughs> I like, I, uh, uh, it just, it's so funny. Like it's, we finally saw Dom smile. I like Dom. I'm so happy he's my winner pick. No, no, like, like, that's a great pick. That's who, like, you know what? I probably, I would have won that person as well. But I just, like, he's not my, the kind of guy that I would get along with. But it was so funny, like, I don't know if we're going to go right into this now, but, like, the whole Chris talking about being a model. Oh, yeah, that's exactly what I have next. He's like, Chris is actually a one-upper. <laughs> You know what? I don't know if he's a one upper. He's like, the only one upper. Such... Yeah, like when he's talking about the volleyball thing on exactly, the beach. Exactly. Like, 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 yeah, I, I totally played some uh, some beach volleyball, and like he called it something some ball varsity, and uh, you know, we we went to the championships and we took the took the took the, took the title home, man. And uh, yeah, and uh, some uh, and uh, sometimes I model. <laughs> I didn't, I told Libby, but like. I, like I said, I used to model, but like, oh, so you're a model? Yeah. But like, he, he obviously doesn't tell anybody that he used to model because they don't want him to think that he's like self absorbed and what other, I don't know what other words he used, but he definitely said uh, beneficiary 101. I, I, <laughs> no, well, LOL. Sorry, sorry. I'm like 101. What? No, beneficiary. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I, like, I like Chris in the sense that, like, you yeah, got fine, he's pretty to look at. But he's probably always been told that he's been pretty to look at and that he's been pretty, 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 pretty. He's probably never not had a date, you know. But I feel like when you are put into a category of being this really pretty person, you get to be, I don't know, like, you don't really have those personal connections with, at a, at a different level. I don't know. And that's what I think he's like trying to do. I think he's really trying to prove to himself, not just like America or whatever. He's trying to prove that to himself that he can do this. Well, that he's more than just like his pretty face. I don't even think he's that cute. And like his like, you know, he's sports cute. prowess. He like gets along with people. So he doesn't, he doesn't really do that very well. He gets along with people, but he, he looks like he really beats himself up. Because he was like, from day one, I had the, the cards stacked against me. What? Because your whole group said that you should be the leader of that one challenge. Then you picked Dez to do the puzzle and he did some stuff. And then Don goes, I would have picked differently. And that's, that's your, the cards are stacked against you? No, they're not. You just happen to be picked randomly. Like a well, and like you're just not really good with like managing your ego with a variety of egos like you know if he was better at being a social player i think that he would not feel like the cards are stacked up against him because well they're not but he wouldn't feel that way if he was just better at getting along with people oh yeah no i completely agree he's socially inept like he can't like i like i just i he's he's a sweet guy and love like lovely it's just that yeah no shit just shut up and stop talking because i don't yeah <laughs> <laughs> Jenna, though, I thought that Jenna might still like be into Chris, but she couldn't even have him. 
like zero personality Jenna's like <laughs> her face got even more mad yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um what happens next so the Malolo tribe now consists of Des Mike James Kellen and Angela and Angela's like I I actually really don't like her I know that she's like on your team she was my last pick guys just so you know oh like and- like, and the, I'm not invested with these people. I'm not going to hang out with them later. So, well, I just like hate how she plays the game. Like, I get it that she was hurt that her team slit her throat and slit my throat by my own family. Like, I get that it was really, really hurtful and that she wasn't necessarily expecting it. But I hated the fact that she spilled all the family tea without any, like, a, like a hesitation, you know? Like, that is very useful information that she could have really used to her advantage if she used it a little more accurately. Like, yeah, instead of being, like, so woe is me about the whole thing. Like, my family slit my throat. I mean, I know that she had to, to a certain extent, tell Kellen and who's the other person? Kellen and yes, yes. yes, just because they were on the same tribe before. But like, that's something that she should have maybe talked to them t- t- together about. It could have been maybe edited this way so it makes it look like she has this like this struggle with like going with James and or going with her old Malolo tribe, but like or Davidi tribe. But she never. I don't know. I think that she played that whole hand whole completely wrong. She just looks. Well, she, just seems, like, she just seems like she just seems like she's had a she's had a tough life. Like she like they go into her story a, a little bit. It seems like she's had a little bit of a tough life, and that she went on the show and on sorry wow sorry girl but on day three you almost got voted off. Well, fuck, dude, you still got another fucking thirty seven days left. Absolutely. Like you know, the whole game. Like we're on day fifteen. What are we on, like, in real life? Week six? <laughs> but, like, really, this is just going back to back to back. So, like, get over it. Because there's still, like, a whole another like, three weeks left of the, the whole competition. Absolutely. And, like, and even her, like, voicing this to the entire team, it gives Mike an opening. And th- that's what he sees as well. Like, oh, maybe this is the crack that he's looking for, him and James, to, like, go in and, and penetrate this. And so, yes, it could be good because, like, maybe Angela will be swooped up as a number, but she's going to be always on the bottom and nobody's going to think she's loyal. Like, she's just a friggin' victimized snitch. Like, I don't know. She's, she's like, the just... perfect person to take to the final two. Uh, no, please don't. Please don't. Please well, I mean, don't. like, she, but she's that person that evil will win against. I don't think so, though. I don't think she'll be she'll make it there this with, with these people. No, no, no. I like I I don't. I hope she doesn't. But I mean, like, hey, she's the perfect person to take. Yeah, hateable by everybody. Hated by everybody. Yeah, and not, not well liked. Doesn't have a story. Didn't grow as a person. So we'll see what happens yeah. by the end. Yeah. Um, but so let but me I just love, I love that try because I had all those people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like watching the show going, well, I have 10 of these people. Where are they? <laughs> so I have five on this tribe and I have three and two or something and something like, I don't know. I'll figure it out while we're doing this. But moving on. Well, James and uh, Mike, they have like a little walk and talk. Um, and also Kellen is talking to Angela about how her and Des are solid. Um, and she's hoping that... Uh, but, then, but, okay, but, okay, he, they're recognizing that, De, that Des and Kellen are solid, and then also that they're hoping that because Angela feels slighted, that maybe that there's a chance for, that should be indebted to James, maybe. I mean, for them, it's a really good hope, especially with her coming back and being like, oh, my tribe slit my throat, blah, like, so awful, ooh. So I could see how they could be like, they'd be like, Oh, maybe though, you know, it was James, it was me that saved you from your, your family, but... Ghost Island! 
Uh, but so back at Navidi Beach, and it's actually kind of hilarious because it does look like a resort. And Bradley is the first one to talk about the fact that like he felt like he's back at like Club Med. Yeah, just like back at uh, back at the uh, golf course, back at the the resort, and uh, <laughs> you know it's good to be back home. It's good to be back home with his little mouth when he talks. Looks, looks like Waldo. He just goes, "Where's Waldo?" He does look like Waldo. Yeah. He does look like Waldo. Um, and so they even have like a cup of coffee when they're over there. And Chelsea, you know, Chelsea's getting some airtime. She cries over the coffee. Yes, I mean, she, gets, she gets airtime. She gets airtime. And have you ever noticed that like this has been like Chris's diary room? Like I call them diary rooms, but um, there are little confessionals that it's like the lighting is so beautiful on them. <laughs> it's like that's why I'm kind of sitting like this today. I'm like, this is my diary room. So, <laughs> in, the, like a free brand? in the jungle, like all of a sudden Chelsea's like crying over this thing, dirty and gross and smelly, and then all of a sudden she's like glamorized in the, in the bush, <laughs> with like <laughs> great <laughs> lighting. <laughs> yeah, like oh, just I, I had that <laughs> coffee. It just brought back so many memories. Uh, and I was actually really happy because, like, when you already mentioned it, but Dom was smiling. Like, I felt good for him. He's just like, he's like, I've had Chris on my back since day one. And it just feels nice to not have to be feeling that heat for a moment. And so I, I, was, I heard him say something like, I have control now or something like that. I'm like, okay, never say that. Please don't say that. If the edit shows you saying that, like, it could be bygones be bygones. But he kind of smoothed it out. It was just kind of like, just really excited to not have Chris on his back. So I'm hoping that it wasn't uh, a little bit of a red herring there as to what- Well, clearly like that is going to be the ultimate showdown when it comes back into it. And I'm just hoping that while Chris and Dom are going like this, Michael just slides on through. Uh, it really depends on how many, how many before they merge. Which, what, they're at like 14 now, is it? Uh, is that right? Yeah, you have nine, I have five. So they usually don't merge until what, 11? 10. 10, Ten usually. Because they'll have three for the final. And then seven. And then seven to nine. So there's still at least two more tribal councils before they merge. Oh, for sure. Or three. So, uh, unfortunately, well, with how things shake out, I'm not sure if that if he th those are in his cards. To be fair, but I'm rooting. I am rooting for him. He is a major underdog, even though he's not on my team. But I know he's your number one pick, so I'm, you know. Um, I, I, how, do you, I don't know how do you feel about he's dog? getting a lot? Of, he's just getting a lot of airtime, and he's getting a, like he's getting a really good edit. So now, I'm hoping that like. So I, see, I invested in Stephanie. And like, then she's gone now? Like, I'm getting tired of getting invested in these characters. Oops, shit. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry, friends. Technical <laughs> difficulties. Um, um, yeah, no, but like, I'm getting it. Like, I got invested in Stephanie, and all of a sudden she's gone. I'm like, okay, now I'm heartbroken. <laughs> now I want, who do I want to? And then I was like, oh, James, you know, James is a great guy. Oh, he's gone now. Why am I getting invested in these people? Spoiler alert. <laughs> oh, sorry guys. <laughs> Most likely they've watched the episode. They're watching this. Um, and then uh, what happened? Oh yeah, no, my question was to you. How do you feel about Dom um, voicing Libby to be a devil in an angel's body? Well. Do you think she's that, do you think she's that cutting, cunning? Um, I think he's a really good judge of character, and I think that that she is that kind of person that doesn't indulge in conversation and keeps her cards close, but probably has a trick up her sleeve to like slice your throat. Yeah, I know. Like I, I, I think I was, agree. I agree, agree with his. Own. Yeah, well, I mean, if if she, I would like to see her reaction to him saying that when she <laughs> watches the episode and be like, what? Well, she does do that whole, like, smile thing. Like, it's, it is obviously since the Morgan vote because, like, you know, she's, like, this Southern Christian, Southern Belle, blah, 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 Southern Charm, and then she, like, I don't think that it was necessary. Well, do you know what? She's still in the game, so. It was pretty well done. 
I really but, wanted her to keep Morgan though. I wanted them to work together as a pair. I wanted to see that dynamic. I did. I did. I did. And they're both on my team. Um, <laughs> you know that Brad and Dom though were buds. Brad and Dom. Yeah. I. Uh, yeah, like that's the kind of guys would hang out. No, they would never hang a construction guy and some some twenty three year old like like law, junior lawyer. Yeah, right. They would never cross the same. Over, over two bottles of Labatt Blue. Yeah, totally. No, because the lawyer yeah. guy is not drinking Labatt Blue because he's like pussy. <laughs> Not him particularly, like at like 20, like early, I don't know how old he is, but like, I'm guessing he's 23. Bradley? Yeah, I don't know, he's 26. Oh, well, who cares? I have, I have it somewhere, but I don't, I don't know. I'm like, I'm not going to sleep over it. <laughs> um, <laughs> do you think that Brad, because Brad says he's like, oh, I'm playing an A plus game. Do you agree with that? Okay, well, put your money where your mouth is. Like, let's come on, and then let's. Well, up until now, though, do you agree with his assessment of himself? I think that he has just had the numbers. How about that? I agree. I would say that that is gameplay. Having the numbers is not gameplay. That's just called statistics. Exactly, and like the fact that like he was worried that he was his number, his his days were numbered, means that he wasn't playing that great of a game. That the fact that like they didn't have a contingency plan that would save him from going home or the fact that he was the one that was going to be chosen to go home if everything went as planned so you can't be playing a good game if you had like a really close call and you didn't he didn't do anything to save himself other than just like phew we had the numbers yeah it's only <laughs> and kellen didn't play that game what game uh, her her what you call it island game ghost island game oh no she didn't no like so if she had won the advantage and lost her vote like you might have been done what was the what they have? it was like five four it would have been five five they started at five five no no four five four yeah five four five four five, four 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 and there been four four and someone would have had to have gone over to the other one's side or they would have, whoever the two people that they voted for, which would have been... Bradley and Brendan. Right? They would be immune, and then everybody else would be game. Or draw rocks. Oh my god, that would have been really a lot better, TV-wise. That's what I don't mind when they draw rocks. If you, can't, if you guys don't make a decision, and if you guys can't grow some balls and flip the vote and it's not you're not going home so if no you're matter like, what though i think that in that case though the the former navidi or whoever they were like the the michael stephanie whatever that group of people they should not they shouldn't budge and because especially because the other side has the numbers they just lost their vote um and force the other people to either draw rocks because they they at that point then they Someone on their side is going to go. Yeah. Okay, so we get to the immunity challenge, and Jeff shows us that it is a new idol, and it has two pieces to it, and that means there's it's a the idol. We're not doing that idol. We're going to do this idol. It has a top and a bottom. And then losing tribe. You can see me at tribal council tonight. So <laughs> that's the so survivors ready and go. What do they have to do? Oh my god. Okay, so this is a challenge that has been in Survivor for God knows how I like, long. I like the challenge. Okay, so question. Where would you be, like to be in this challenge? Would you like to be I would be the, I'd be the caller. Okay. Because I could so, be the caller has to also do the puzzle. Exactly. I don't know why they put Des on that friggin' puzzle. It's all about the puzzle. It was all because, about the puzzle. Like, because what we said last episode, we said how... For some reason, Des is just getting her way. Des is just like, get her, like, she just, whatever Des says, like, whatever Des says. That's exactly what's happening. And she's like, I want to redeem myself. Okay, we're going to let you redeem yourself. But if you I say that you're not good at puzzles. This loud voice, but even though, like, even when I was watching the challenge, like, I was like, ooh, that be, should be very difficult to hear her directions. Like, it wasn't very clear. Um, 
so, and then I was like, and she doesn't think that she's good at puzzles and these people are blindfolded. I'm like, this is, this doesn't look very good for them. I'm like, who's, are the other people doing the puzzles uh, or the calling? I'm like, Dom, okay, he's okay at puzzles. Wendell, I don't know how good he is at puzzles, but like, better than, they're both better than Des. Better. Oh, yeah, well, because De uh, Dom is, uh, works on a construction site. He's used to yelling and having to like be like, no, 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 over there. But, like at the same time, he like ha they have to construct something, which is a giant puzzle. A building is a big giant puzzle. So he is able to communicate and have great communication skills. And with pieces and shapes and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, and Wendell is a for sick. For forgets a bag, and they were so far behind, and then still they won. They won first because yep. he was able yep. to say like the right words. And what does Wendell do? He does something like- Furniture design. Oh, well, cool. Puzzles. Puzzle, for sure. And what, is, what, is, what does Dingbat do? What does Desiree do? I think she's a student. Yeah, she's a student. She's stay in school. <laughs> she did change her major. <laughs> but like I wrote, I wrote down, obviously the caller should be the best puzzle solver, not the loudest. I wrote that in capitals. Yeah, it should have been, it should have been Kellen. But she, they or, said that she's just too quiet about yeah. it. Kellen or James should have been with the ones calling. That's who it should have been. But like, I don't know. I felt bad for the two, so I felt bad for the two people just standing there with blindfolds on in the background. <laughs> they, couldn't take the, they couldn't take the masks off. They'd just stand there and listen to this person yell at these two people, these two bl <laughs> blind people doing a puzzle. <laughs> One, well, you can also hear the other couple, like the other teams too, like screaming and stuff. Yeah, hearing the other teams winning. So here's poor Michael and James, and they're just tied together, blindfolded, <laughs> and, they're in the and they're in the lead, and they lose. I know. Yeah. Well, again, Navidi was trailing quite a bit. Navidi, I believe, is the is Wendell's tribe. Yeah. No, it's no Dom's. Oh no, Dom's sorry, Dom's tribe. I keep yeah. on thinking they're on the same team still, but they're not. So they were trailing for a while, and then that's when Wendell realized that they don't have their third puzzle piece back, so he runs all the way back, basically, to the start, grab these puzzle pieces, gets all the way back there, which is giving, like, Malolo a big advantage here with, like, using this puzzle. And uh, so the puzzle was Angela and Kellen over there. Um, who are the other puzzle people? I didn't write it down. Does it matter? <clears throat> winners and winners. Winners and winners, which is first was uh, Yahua. Wait. Yahua yeah, who, is yeah, who second. And, uh, and Navidi. Navidi is first. And Malolo and Malolo lost again. Pardon? And Malolo loses again. That's exactly what I was going to say. I should have said yes. it. The same time. But like, what's funny is, is that, I, well, I'm, I'm not skipping ahead, but maybe they do merge next week. I don't know, just based off of... Uh, no, I don't, I don't think so. Um, um, oh, yeah, then, Brad and Libby were the other two solving the puzzle, and Seb and Chris were solving the puzzle. So I wouldn't pick Seb and Chris to be the puzzle people, but they, they're probably better at taking directions, you know what I mean? And listening. Yeah. And anyways, so they, Malolo made a bad choice there, big time. Oh, even Kellen, like, in the puzzle, though, like, I, it, was, it was definitely, you know, indicative of what was going to happen when Kellen's like, don't yell at me, I'm doing my best. It's like, well, then don't get the loudest person to be the, the yeller if you don't, if you can't ha to handle the heat. Like... She's been yelling at you for the last 25 don't, minutes. Don't yell at me. This, this whole thing, like, clearly, your puzzle's upside down. Like... <laughs> I don't know, something. It's just, it's, it's, I don't know what she was saying to them. I can't believe they lost that challenge. Well, and also though, like, Kellen be better at puzzles because like, I don't know, I feel like it was like a six piece puzzle. Like, I feel like you could do that blindfolded, not too difficult. To, like, it, it was I know. Like they had these the base of it, so they had the outline. So it wasn't like they had to figure out which pieces were the base. So they knew it was going to be a circle. So there's only going to be like four or five people pieces in the outside and then like three pieces in the middle. Like, 
I don't know. I didn't think I could just be watching it from my couch and like, you know, not giving these players any, any credit here, but it just seemed like it wouldn't have been even that hard of a puzzle to do blindfolded. They needed to calm down. They needed to just like, remember when we did the escape room? Like, yes, I was like yelling and stuff, but I was just like, okay, Chantel, what do you see over there? And then I'm like, what do you see? I see this, 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 and this. And it was like, the communication was good. Yeah, you have to be clear in your communication. You can't panic. You can't, like, get frazzled and flustered, or it's it's not useful at all. So this is the fifth time that Malolo's going to tribal council, and Michael has been to five out of six tribal councils. I mean, cool that he's he's stayed in the game, but, like, he's odd. Hey, I don't mind looking at him during the tribal council. It's totally fine. (laughs) Who are we going to look at? Who are we going to look at? Jack Probes? (laughs) <laughs> Jeff's cute, no? He's so hot. Oh my god. You love Jeff? I'm not into Jeff. Oh, but... <laughs> Jeff Probst, take your shirt off. <laughs> um, I, Des, though, I thought she was uh, trying to fall on the sword here, and I'm always just like, I, okay, you might not necessarily understand what I'm saying. Like, you may in another sense, but as minorities, there there is a little bit of like a pressure to do well because you know you want to be seen for your value, but you don't want to be a hindrance to the team because it makes it very easy for um, the non minorities to vote you out. So you try to a fit in, you're trying to do b do your job well and not stick out for anything negative. And so I've noticed that with both her and James before when they made a mistake that they really, really fell on their sword here. And I'm wondering if it's actually just because of being a minority that they're taking it so to heart that they need to like be that much better than anybody. Like anybody, like Des didn't do that bad of a job. Okay, okay, but okay. So I'm gonna like put it in my perspective. If, dude, if I was the caller and I said, I wanna do this, I wanna do this for the team, and we're in the lead, and I lose, yeah, dude, I'd be right there. I would totally be upset. Totally, totally, totally. But I felt as though it seemed like both of them were giving their tribes, like, reason to kick them off, as opposed to just being like, I'm really sorry, guys. I fucked up. Not, I'm sorry, guys. I fucked up. Vote me out. You know what I mean? There's a difference. Yeah, yeah. or... Dude, I just fucked up that challenge. Like in the diary room, just being like, I fucked that challenge up. How the fuck am I gonna get out of this one? But they're all like, it's, I'm, it's either him or me. It's like, I get home. it. Like, you know, you vote for me, I understand. Like, I didn't pull back. No, I'm just like, no, just keep fighting. Don't give them a reason to vote you out. And I just yeah, feel like, like it's a little, it, I'm curious is if, if, it's, if it's a minority thing. Because I find that most minorities I, do that. I, I, I mean, but it, all, but it also comes down to, I mean, they are both minorities, but it does come down to, like, how people are brought up just as, like, kids. You That's know? a point, like, though, right? I guess. I mean, like, like, I've always been, I've always had to be the best so I can hide from being other, uh, right? So I'd be the best, then nobody can bother me. And so I've always had to have that on my back. It's like, I always have to be top, I always have to be the best, I always have to be the smartest, I always have to be the funniest, I, have to be the I always have to do that because then I'm not seen as different. Like I'm seen as the best, you know what I mean? So I feel, I'm just curious, it, like this is just something I'm noticing is that I feel like a lot of minorities try to fit in in these cultures and to be not recognized as other, but as in part of the group has to ex- be excellent so they're not, looked at as the minority and so that's why i'm wondering if like it's such a harder fall is always having that added pressure of like not wanting to be kicked out because you're black or because you're asian but because you're you you messed up like uh competitive this 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 we could talk about this for a very long time this is <laughs> this is this is a this might be a life lesson right? <laughs> it is a life lesson well because, like, well because at the end of the day though you like uh, your parents always want the best for any of their kids. Mm-hmm. Um, so they, 
they they give advice. They like they they want them to succeed. They also just don't want to be that little dirty kid that's like sitting in the corner, not like not giving their hundred ten percent. You know what I mean? So like, it like and I can't speak for all Asian culture, but like I know the Asian culture is very like high on marks and like book smarts and like. 90s and 100 percent on like tests and everything like they study like crazy but then i don't know it's, it's like it's i don't know i can't i can't speak i can't um so does uh, her pick is for james um especially because she doesn't really know him hasn't really gotten to know him at all and she got to know mike just a little bit even though they're they were on the opposite sides of the same tribe um so her vote was going to be for james over mike no matter what so you hear that james tells a little bit of his story and like how he feels that he's going and he talks to Angela. And so this is like his like one shot. But I think the problem with James, and this could be because of his upbringing um, at, at being, you know, very smart, very, you know, making sure that you're successful academically, et cetera. Um, he doesn't really have any empathy or heart or... So as much as Des was upset for the fact that she messed up, like James didn't appeal to Angela's sensitive side at all in his plea. Like, he's just like, I, you know, like, I, I want to be here, blah, blah, blah. And like, it was just very robotic. I felt like he was like a cyborg, like, displaying the facts about, like, you know, his life and, you know, what he's did for her. And, but, like, he didn't appeal to her, I felt. No, I, I, I agree. Like, the funny thing is, though, is that in some... <sighs> some cultures or whatever that they they focus so much on a certain way that they really don't know how to relate in another way to something else like for okay so as a gay man okay as a gay man if you're so involved with gay culture and being a part of just the gay community i went on a date one time with this guy and he said oh uh, the, my my sister's getting married, and uh, I I'm one of the the groomsmen, and I, I I'm not looking forward to it. And I was like, why? Well, because all the rest of the groomsmen are straight, and I don't know how to talk to straight guys. And I said, what do you mean? He's like, I, I can't like I can't talk to them. Like I don't know what to talk to them about. He's like, um, talk about being a dude. <laughs> talk about, talk about um, Toronto, where you live. Talk about I don't know. Your, your sister, I don't know, talk to them about something. Yeah, Just because they are straight, it was like, I find that- Well, like at one point he was a straight man. <laughs> like, no, at one point <laughs> you were still a dude that like- Hadn't come out yet, yeah. Yeah. It's, just, it's, it's kind of funny, like, but saying that James was not empathetic towards stuff, it's because he just never, like, they don't, like, it's very, like, narrow-minded in that sense. I don't know. It's just not the way you're brought up. Or maybe it's just a cold-hearted bastard. So either, either one is that it wasn't going to be working for her, especially with Angela, who's, you know, going, like, slit my throat, blah, 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 like, you know, crying over, like, her yeah. family, like... You know, and then they give her her actually her moment with like, you know, she le she retires from the army or whatever. Was it the army? Retires, retires. And then her daughter goes to college. Then she gets a divorce. And so like, she's actually also in like an emotional state of in her life. And like, Survivor is probably kind of a um, midlife crisis type thing, like doing something completely different. Like, she's in a very emotional place in her life, I feel. And I think that... She, he could have used that to his advantage to get her to him to appeal to her to stay. Um, I think that that could have happened, but he didn't. He didn't have the tools, whether he was not brought up with them or he chooses not to use them, but it didn't work. See ya. But, yeah, like, like, like Angela's. Bye. Like, like, I was almost like, I was just like, finally, I get to lose a person. Like, Oh, good. I, need to get, I, I was like, oh, I'm losing a person. Well, well I don't... kind of the edit did play it up a little bit that uh, maybe Angela was going to swing towards James because she was talking about how she likes James 
and you know he did save her blah 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 but then um, I would have lost Des so then no problem either um, so Kellen though was worried though that Angela was going to vote with James which is interesting um, I thought it, I wasn't sure it was so good though that Kellen was talking about how close her and Des were um, I thought that that like the, she should maybe not play that off as much like I like when she said like we've been on the same tribe this whole time but the fact that like me and Des are like this or like you know I just don't think that you should just put those like visuals and those like things out there necessarily because like once the merge comes they're going to want to break you apart but, know, but, but when you've been with somebody from day, like on t day 15 every single day and you're pooping in the woods with them yeah you're gonna bond with them and like you're gonna like love each other so yeah like if it was me and you for the first day yeah like i'd be like right with you because at least that's a vote not against me absolutely well right? like, you just look at our big brother experience like pretty much well, most of the people. <laughs> um, yeah, like if we were to do that for two full days, like we had like it's a sleepover part, like we'd probably be like all friends for life, yeah, for sure. Oh, my my season, um, when we played that, I would say that we're all friends for life. We all just have this like mutual like understanding of what we were a part of, but Nick and I will be friends for life. Nick and I had that bonding from that day, from that first HOH to the final. I was all about him. There was one time where I did get mad at him. Yeah, I hear, hear about yeah. it all the time, guys. <laughs> um, so um, I was curious though, is this if this was going to be the final, like the first time where Navidi actually breaks down or breaks apart? Because like Angela is so emotional and like she was wronged by the other old Navidi. And, but I was just thinking, I'm like, Kellen and Des never did her anything wrong. So, like, I don't know if it's yeah. great for her to do them wrong because they weren't a part of that at all. At it, was all. Really, it was really a, a, uh, Angela's decision for this episode. Yeah, she was a swing. She, and, like, and good for her. She got a little bit of a story arc. So, mm -hmm. I mean, we'll see what happens. <laughs> and uh, now we're at tribal and jeff jeff just like he loves survivors so much <laughs> he just I, there's, there's like, no way that jeff probes is ever gonna quit survivor no it's like, is, like yeah the network has to be like pulling him around with the cane you know like come on get off the stage um but i mean actually it could be one of those shows kind of like the price is right just goes on for like 50 years like yeah, it's like, awesome. why not? Like, it'll always be the show, and Jeff Probst is like set for life. There. Like he's been set for life for the last fucking thirty seasons, probably. So, probably. like, he's he's great. He's really good at his job. He gets to travel. His family's probably with him. He's still great looking, and uh, yeah. And he would be a legend. Like, regardless, though, he was the beginning of something that is momentous in the 2000s culture. Oh, yeah. Like, reality TV, like, Survivor changed reality TV. Survivor was the show in which everyone tuned in to watch old men, old women, young girls, young guys, different ethnicities all together, like, trying to vie for a million dollars and they vote people off. That was amazing. Good job, Mark Burnett. I remember <laughs> watching the first episode and be like, what is this? And oh, like, first yeah. someone asked me, but I'm like, I don't know what it is, but I have to tune in next week. So I don't get it, but I want to. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know. It's like, they're living on an island for a million dollars. That's all I knew about yeah, it. Yeah, like when I heard the concept at first, I was like, okay. I don't know, like, I don't know what came first. Who, who wants to marry a millionaire? Or Survivor. I think Survivor. I think Survivor did. But it was just like, just weird shows that were on TV that were trying something out. And I, I turned into the third episode when Stacy got kicked off. I'll always remember it. Because I had mono at the time. And I was like, so sick. And I'm watching it. And I'm like, this was really good. And I like, really liked that Stacy girl. And apparently it was like a big controversy after she got kicked off. So there was more to it. I, and I had never seen the first episode of Survivor until the DVD box set was released. And that was like years later. 
Yeah, no, I, well, I mean, I watched the first episode. Um, I don't remember the third episode, obviously, as well as you did, but I remember little Colleen, her little cute little face, and I remember the snake and the rat with the Sue Hawk and the idiot guy <laughs> that wanted to um, do his voting by, like, random numbers. Um, alphabet. He did it in alphabetical oh, orders. Man. And then there was the t- and then there was the time where where Jenna they all, they they all got a letter from home, but Jenna didn't get a letter from home because they didn't send it in soon enough. And she oh, cried and like and then there's old man Rudy and uh, oh god yeah those people those people became famous. I don't actors. remember like, remember, remember, like Colleen was in that Robert uh, Rob Schneider movie called The Animal. Sort of. <laughs> he was like the female lead in it. And she's like, oh, Rob Schneider is the animal. And Colleen Haskell from Survivor. I don't fully remember that, but like, I really wanted her to come back for like All Stars or something. Cause that was I even read the novel of Survivor. You're embarrassing. <laughs> no, it's not embarrassing. Like, have you ever read it? No. It was like, it was in the perspective of like one of the camera crew, they would write how everyone talked. and they were saying things in there that like were not aired on the show. And it was quite interesting because Sue was like, she came up with a real bitch in the book. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Jeff Mid Tribal is all like, Malolo may be the worst tribal performances in ever in Survivor history. I was like, well, actually they- no, I'm pretty sure that the worst tribe in history was, remember that season with Ozzy yeah. and oh. Stephanie? That one where all of a sudden it was just this lone wolf coming over the hill. <laughs> she was the last one standing. Oh. She came over and she lost anyways. But that season, I think it was like season eight or something. But this is also like just tied to the name yes. of too, because they've had different people on the tribe. So um, so the tr- tribe name Malolo might have a negative performances for sure. Michael um, always has been a Malolo. Michael, Michael's been a Malolo the entire time. Correct? I guess so. No, he must have been the Navidi the first episode. Dom's always been Navidi, right? But wasn't Dom and Mike on the same tribe at one point? No. Oh, right, because he had Chris and Chris had, and then Mike was on the other one. Right. Yeah. So, oh, poor thing. Um, and poor Daz being like, she wanted to come up and be like this track star, but she's like, I did that, but no, she didn't. I did that. Hey, if you could run, you can't do puzzles at the same time. Yeah. You no, know, she, yeah, she should have known her strengths better and she should have been someone that uh, picked up the puzzle pieces as opposed to putting them together. Bad call. Um, so what's interesting though is like, what is actually better for them to be strength in numbers now before going to the merge or if they're supposed to be strong? What do you think? Because if like, I play, if I was playing the game, I want to get to the merge, obviously. So moving forward, um, in my perspective, like would, would I, let's just say if I was playing it and I would want to keep people that are going to work with me well in the game as opposed to, I don't know, I don't know. Like if you're, if you were on Navidi in this, tri- in this, in this game, the original Navidi, then you're sitting pretty so far when it comes to the merge because mm-hmm. you're just going to pick all those Malolo people off. That's fine. But I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Yeah, you keep the strong people around, but you don't know what's going to happen. Exactly. I mean, I'd probably stick with numbers personally. It's it's a safe bet. It's it's the safer way to go. It was better to get rid of James and keep the numbers than because like even though like if they get to the merge and James is there, he would be have a shot at those individual immunities too. And that's cool. Like, and what if it's one of those ones where he has to dive down and get something? Well, <laughs> it's the bet. <laughs> So, um, yep, so the group still has three Navidi and two Malolo, and it doesn't look like the two and two is going to break. 
So we know that our lovely friend Angela is going to be the tiebreaker. Um, so Jeff, Jeff, you know, decides to, to have his little tribal moment. He's like, in life, do you lead with your heart or your head? And Angela's like, heart. Michael's like, no, no, Angela's like, head. Michael's like, heart. Des is like, head. James is like, head. And then Kellen, sorry, Kellen. I think it's like a combination of like, <laughs> of your gut. You know, and like, your gut is the perfect mix of your head and your heart. Oh my God. You're so, like your storyline of going with your gut is like really playing through here, Kellen. It's so annoying. Yeah, like, Jeff Probs Jeff, Jeff, Jeff Probs like, 36 seasons of Survivor. You're still and I'm, and, I'm, and I'm still learning things from oh. the contestants. Yeah, I'm your she's having a day. <laughs> and on that note, we don't know what happens the next the next episode, except that the Lolo burns their flag. Wait, 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 we didn't and talk stopped. about one last little piece. Why? The last little piece is like after the boat, oh. and Jeff gives, James gives the death stare. Over and I was like, I and like the music, the sound effects. To were who? Like, to who? What? To who though? I don't know. It looked like it was to Angela, but it might have just been just like a look in the back and it just how it was edited. But like the sound effects made him look like this like main, maniacal robot that was like. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I, I, did, I am. I am glad that we're talking about this because when I watched it again last night, he goes. He goes, it was a good blindside, guys. Blindside? Come on! <laughs> you a blindside. That's not a blindside. Dude. It was you or Des. That means that There's like five of you. It's not a blindside. <laughs> There's five people and it ain't no blindside. Ain't no blindside. So then you're to your point. You can you can state the thing. Set the flag on fire, because maybe that would get rid of the bad boot of mojo. Juju. juju, is that what it is? Bad juju. Juju? Like J U J U Juju? Is that what it is? Is that the Juju? Well, it's it's not a real word, but it's like bad juice, like Juju. Oh, okay. Um, we'll, figure, we'll figure that out for the next episode. We'll come back with the definition of Juju. Juju. Bad vibes, bad, bad Juju, bad juice, bad blood, blood, bad. Um and so yeah, they decide to burn the flag. Mike and Des, burn it. Burn it! So I'm curious to see if uh, the superstition here of the Manolo flag will allow them to reign supreme in the next episode. And thank you, Survivor Gods, for taking one of Michael's people from him. Because I was getting sick of losing all the best players on the show. <laughs> like, sorry, my, my, my people were good. They're interesting. And they're gone. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, like... They all, yeah, like I'm like I don't want Malolo to lose again because that's all my people. Like there's that's four people on there, so I don't want them to lose, lose again. Malolo, but, lose but, Malolo, burn that flag! No, no, no. <laughs> Sorry, I really. No, I'm glad they burned that flag. Um, okay, so just point system. There was no, there was no um, reward challenge. Oh, um, there, no one found an idol. Uh, there was no, there was no Ghost Island either. So basically, we're going with just immunity. Um, so I don't get those people. Hold on, hold on, hold on. One, you just find two, three. Uh, okay, here. So if, am I correct with we're starting at two sixty five and eighty five right now? Two sixty five, one eighty five. Yeah. Okay. And. With this episode, <laughs> it's, I'm so sorry, babe. No one got any points. What do you mean? We, all, we got points, but we're still the same points because I have three people on the one tribe and two on the other, and you have three on the one tribe and two on the other. Right. And then I have the other five over there. But don't you lose a point for like him getting voted out or anything? <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Nobody found an idol, nobody lost an idol. Was there a reward? There was no reward. No. 
It's just five points, so it's like we both would get. That's, so we both got 25 extra points. You want to leave it at what it is now, or do you want to put the 25 extra points? Yeah, with those 25 points. Okay. I think we should add those in. You just want your number to be bigger. Well, I mean, like compared to all stars, yeah. Well, not gonna lie though, I kind of feel as though I'm still have a shot here of like taking up the. Oh, for sure. Like 290 to 110, 210. Yeah, absolutely. But once they merge though, we're not gonna have so many points. So hopefully your people have like kicked all yours off. Like I need to get all of your rewards and stuff. Equal ish at the merge for me to have a chance. Well, it's good that if someone on Navidi wins um, reward, they get to take people on the reward and they get points as well. They that, and then the also um, if um, I have Dommy, he could be win play his idol correctly. I think that's one of them. No, he just found one. But isn't playing the idol correctly, isn't that another point? I think it's if you get voted off with an idol in your pocket. You lose a point? Anyways, we'll go Whatever, back. Whatever, friends. I'm winning right now. <laughs> Whatever. It's For two, now. And it's not that big of a uh, stretch. It's not that bad. Yeah. But tune in next week. <laughs> but we, uh, week. We'll do uh, episode seven. So thank you all for watching. Uh, my name is Michael Pez. And I'm Sean Jesus. And you can see me um, on Instagram at Michael Pez. And, and I'll be at Shan Fran Fran. Or at Misty Arrow underscore. Is it? No, Misty Arrow. Or underscore. the both of us at Reality Realness with three S's on Instagram. Perfect. Uh, and you can tune, tune in, watch uh, our RuPaul's Drag Race on uh, YouTube and subscribe down below. And um, yeah, it's been, uh, and for those who are tuning in, I'm actually getting some feedback from some friends. Some friends have actually like, <laughs> have actually said, oh yeah, I've watched a couple episodes. I've watched some of your things. I was like, you have? You what? watched this? <laughs> have oh, you seen my, my, my mom? <laughs> my, um, oh yeah, my friend Tara. Like, they've all like, they've all watched it. They're all like, oh yeah, yeah. So, cool. Oh, yeah. cool. All right, thank you so much. Have a good Share, one. Subscribe. And we will see you soon. Share. Subscribe. Bye. <laughs>